So what's better than a virtual machine? <laughs> a virtual virtual machine. So we're at that point in the world of Proxmox where we're going to move from virtual machines to containers. And to, to review, again, one more time, we talked about this a couple of videos ago. Um, a virtual machine is truly a complete environment, complete with operating system, applications that are running on that operating system, and separated from other operating systems that are running on the same hypervisor, right? Whereas a container, or specifically in the case of Proxmox, an LXC container, is a Linux environment that shares a common kernel, right? Those, those kernel components of Linux are abstracted to make it even more efficient on our resources on our hypervisor, right? So, so how do we create a container? Well, first thing I want to emphasize is that, that it doesn't look like this, right? These are two different virtual machines. Even though this is a Linux instance, it is a Linux virtual machine. It has its own kernel that's not shared, right? So when we go to create our container, we go up here, Click on create container. And this will be, by the way, a very short road. You'll see why in a second. Let's say I'm, I'm creating Ubuntu. Uh, this is Ubuntu LXC uh, container. We'll, I'll just jam a password in there that uh, makes it happy and lets me click the next button because you're going to see this road is very short because it says, okay, what template do you want to create this on? First off, where, where are the templates? It says, here's your local storage. I go, okay, well, great. Let's grab the, uh, uh, the uh, yeah. There's, not, there's, there's nothing there. And that's because out of the box, Proxmox doesn't have templates. We have to, have to actually download them and, and install them. And so, so what are they and how do we get them? Well, easiest way for me is from the command line. So I'm going to go to the server itself. So this is done on a, on a per server basis, by the way. You go to the command line and you type in the command, uh, first off, pvim update, right? This is the command that allows it to go, let me go check the... Proxmox virtual, uh, Pro 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 Proxmox VE appliance manager. That's what PVM is, is, stands for saying, what, what packages, what templates are out there for me? Okay, downloaded them. Now show me what's available. I'll type in PVM available. Available, there we go. And boom, up the screen it scrolls. Look at, look at this. These are all of the different uh, uh, packages or templates, I should say, that are available. Now notice they're in two big categories. One is system, two is turnkey Linux. Now at the very top is this, this little uh, mail gateway at the top, which is something uh, that Proxmox themselves created because they offer a mail gateway product as well. And you can do that, right? But for now, they're, they're saying, okay, if you want to just create a spin up Linux container that again uses those shared components, this is how you do it. You can, and it's like, okay, install the template that you want. Do you like uh, CentOS? Do you like Debian? Do you like Fedora? Do you like Ubuntu? Like, you know, pick, pick your system or go with one of these turnkey appliances, right? Are you looking to run a Canvas environment? Are you looking to run CouchDB, uh, Joomla, LAMP, that's the LAMP stack, right? And a, a lot of these, you know, Moodle, I know what that is, but I don't know what Mibu is, right? Some of these might take a little uh, research, which is as easy as going to Google and typing in, uh, you know, Mibu appliance. And it, you'll, you'll find some description out there of, of exactly what that is. An OS commerce platform, you know, press the shop, this little online store, right? There's all these different appliances where you can just have have it turnkey up. That's, that's again why they call it turnkey Linux. Turnkey a container and boom, you've got a, a Presta shop, if you will, and you're ready to go, right? So what I want to show you here is just how to get this template available and then let's launch it into a container. So let's just say I want to set up an Ubuntu 18.04 standard, blah, 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 right? I want, I, want that, I want that template. I'm going to right click on it and hit copy, right? Hit the enter key a couple times, get to a new line. And I'm going to do a uh, pvim download and I will type in local and then right click and paste that in, right? There's, there's the package that I want. The local is the storage that I'm putting it on, which you saw when I was deploying that template, it says the local is available. So right now it's going through and showing me, here's your download process for just past 50%, going, 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 and we're done. We have our first template that should now be available. Now we'll come back to the data center interface, click on create container, now we can type it, and this is our Ubuntu, uh, let's do 1804, LXC, right? Uh, what is the password? This will be the password that we're going to use to log in as uh, essentially to get our root level access to that VM, right? Um, it says, okay, storage local, we can now click the download. Oh, look at that. 
Here's our little uh, uh, Ubuntu instance. Now, notice the size of that file, 200 megabytes. And that's, again, because Proxmox is giving this as a container rather than the full-blown OS. If you download Ubuntu, I think it's somewhere one, two gigabytes of size, right? Just for the compressed ISO. And then you, you extract it from there, right? So we'll click on next. Okay, what, what root disk do you want? Or where essentially... Uh, where do you want to store this thing? Now, right now it's saying, I'm going to run this container on the thin provisioned local storage. I'm gonna give this guy eight gigabytes of space, which for now, that's fine. Now, you can see below are some of the advanced options just because I have that checked and I want you to see them as we go, but I'm not gonna set those. How many CPU cores do you want? I'll give it, uh, give it a few. Uh, and if we want to limit how much it can consume because we don't want a, a, a rogue container sucking up all of our processor, we can do that. How much memory do you want to give it? Sure, 512 megabytes. And this is going to be where you need to do a little research on what, what are the container requirements? So what are you trying to run in there? What is the specific requirements? Because again, the kernel components are being run elsewhere. So what does that specific application need in terms of processor and memory, right? So once we've done that, now we say, here's the IP address I'm going to give to that, that, um, that component. So, you know, what interface are you going to bridge it to, which in this case is the bridge that we have created before. I'll say this one will be 172.20.0. Let's just make it 75. Gateway, I'll just copy and paste that in there and put the dot one and forgot the subnet mask. There we go. Slash 24. Next. DNS, we'll just give this guy the uh, 172.20.0.1 and 1.1.1.1, one, 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 one. One, my, my new favorite DNS server. I, I used to use 8.8.8, .8 but now 1.1.1.1 one, 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 one is my, uh, it's my even, even easier one, right? Next, confirm and finish, right? We've now created our first container. Notice, it's going through and extracting that archive to build this container. And if you watch it, it's actually running through a little automated process to generate the login information for that Ubuntu instance. As soon as you say it, task OK down at the bottom, you can click on status and say, hey, status currently stopped. It's, it's created. It's OK. Close that out. And we now see our first container over there on the left-hand side in the list. I'm going to right-click on this guy and hit start and power on our first Ubuntu container. Bring up the console. It looks like a VM. It feels like a VM, but it's not a VM. It's a container. It's one where the core kernel components are actually a shared environment, thus this thing being razor cut to be exactly the kind of environment that we need. That's as easy it is as it is to create a container, or you can go to town. And I encourage you, go to town, download a few of those templates, right? Where you can spin up a pre-configured environment for all kinds of various appliances where you can actually get a pretty sweet system, a pretty sweet, whether it be online store, network scanner, I mean, mail server, all the different uh, pre-configured components that they have for you to download and deploy simply as a container. It's that simple.